to make a video that demonstrated the effects on the autonomic nervous system for people who have dysautonomia. In particular, people who have postural, orthostatic, tachycardia syndrome, or POTS. I am using a grapher that you can see here in the video that is monitoring every heartbeat that I have and my skin response. And while I'm sitting down at rest, my normal heart rate is maybe in the 70s or the 80s. But for people with POTS, when we stand up, our heart rate jumps 30 to 40 beats a minute and stays that way until we sit back down. So, let me just show you what it's like with someone with POTS. You may see the heart rate monitor stop for a while as I stand up or move around. It doesn't mean my heart stopped. It's just that this particular device is very sensitive to movement and indeed it's not really intended to be walking around. For people with POTS, it's not about um, being frightened or being out of shape. As you see, my body is relaxed, my breathing is normal, but yet my heart rate is moving as if I was in an aerobics class. My heart is actually very strong, and because of this, I don't pass out. It's able to go as fast as it needs to. Many people with POTS actually do uh, experience syncope and faint many times. Uh, during my tilt table test at the hospital, when they formally diagnosed me with dysautonomia, they kept me up for maybe 20 minutes or more. And at that time, I was certainly shaky and shaking and sweating, and my heart rate was going 160, 170, but I didn't pass out. My heart is capable of going as fast as it needs to, but it is very difficult um, because I'm not doing any kind of physical exercise, yet I am tired, indeed exhausted. A lot of people with chronic fatigue syndrome have orthostatic intolerance, and we don't know if it's a chicken and the egg. Did the chronic fatigue cause, or more likely, did the orthostatic intolerance that they just didn't know about cause the chronic fatigue? At this point, I can feel the numbness and the pins and needles in my leg as the blood is likely pooling and just not making it back up to my heart. Uh, the way that uh, it needs to in order to feel comfortable. And that could be... See, when, when people without POTS stand, the blood vessels contract in their legs in order so the, the blood returns back to the heart. In people with POTS, there may be some kind of vasoconstriction problem. It may be a blood volume problem. It could be nerve conducting problems. It could be a variety of things. Researchers don't always know the answer to why we have POTS. Doctors don't always know the cure. Um, indeed, there is no cure. There are treatments available. And for some of us, they work for some of the time. For the last year or more, they have not worked well for me, and given my particular case of POTS. As my doctor says, POTS is very difficult on the physician because he doesn't know how to treat it. I could stay standing for a while more, but I think this shows the point. Now, unlike people who are exercising, my heart rate will go back down to normal as soon as I get off my feet.
I'm actually very tired right now. And you may not be able to tell that because one of the things with dysautonomia is uh, it happens on the inside. People will say, but you look so good. How can you be sick? Pops is an invisible illness that makes even simple tasks like showering, cooking dinner for my family, walking downstairs, very difficult. But basically, I just wanted to demonstrate what it's like living with pots. Thanks. Good.